Okay, we're gonna switch gears and talk summer hack. So we're all the summer hackers. We got some here, all right, woo! So we basically decided to do some summer hacks this year. It was, uh, it was a new experience for us. I'd never actually uh, run one, and actually never ran it. Um, Wu Kim did all the work, thank you Wu. Um, but we hosted two summer hacks. We did uh, one in Menlo Park uh, that was smaller, more intimate. Uh, and then we did one that was global, uh, which was more of a virtual hack. And to give, give you an idea, here's some statistics. Uh, we had 74 participants in Menlo Park. Um, it was 28 straight hours, and I mean 28 straight hours. Like, basically no one slept. Uh, most of our team didn't sleep, especially Francisco Massa, wherever he is. Um, it was incredible. Uh, we had 13 submissions. Uh, in the global hack, uh, we had almost 1,500 submissions, and it was a five-week-long hack uh, with 74 submissions. And excited to share the, the actual winners here. So uh, it, was the, it was the year of meta-learning. Let me just uh, preface it by saying that. Um, so Learn to Learn, a meta-learning framework, um, took first place. Uh, and Sebastian will, uh, will jump out and give a talk here shortly. Uh, second place was Hello World Net. This was actually a really interesting project uh, about discovering extrasolar planets with PyTorch. Uh, so we actually had someone uh, from NASA Ames in the, uh, in the group, which is really cool. And then the third project uh, was MindTorch, which is really um, bringing a building block-like approach, um, allowing essentially kids, uh, maybe even uh, my five-year-old daughter, to, to be able to, to put blocks together to create uh, deep neural nets um, in kind of an easy way. So that was the, um, the one in Menlo Park. Again, continuing the theme of meta-learning, uh, Torch Meta. Um, so Tristan will get up and, and talk in, in a few minutes. Um, again, uh, really impressive meta-learning framework. Um, and then second place was this end-to-end um, -end music demixing um, platform on PyTorch that also leveraged Torch Audio. So uh, Vincent, wherever you are, um, very proud of that. And then RT was the last project. And RT was by far the most polished. It actually felt like a product. Um, so essentially, you can go today to rt.ai and actually order your own t-shirt um, that actually is generated using a style GAN. Um, so this is actually really, really interesting. So a couple of pictures um, from, from the hack, and we're gonna kick things off. Uh, so Sebastian from Learn to Learn is gonna give us a short talk, uh, followed by uh, Tristan from Torch Meta. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for the introduction, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about our submission to the PyTorch Summer Hackathon, which took place in Menlo Park. And uh, our submission focused on uh, learn to learn which is a PyTorch meta-learning library. We believe that uh, meta-learning might, be, might enable the next wave of AI applications. However, to do so, it needs to resolve two big challenges. The first one, oh, sorry. The first one is, um, is a research challenge because uh, meta-learning algorithms currently don't work that well. The second challenge is an engineering challenge, and it's that meta-learning algorithms are difficult to currently implement. And so we decided to tackle the second challenge, and that's what this presentation is going to be about. Let's start with a short definition. What is meta-learning? Meta the goal of meta-learning is to endow agents with the ability of learning to learn. What this means is that as the agent sees more and more tasks, he should be able to learn how to solve new tasks faster and better. For example, a meta-learning agent might be able to learn how to optimize or how to trade off exploration for exp exploitation. In this presentation, we're going to focus on a specific kind of meta-learning, which is called few-shot meta-learning. Here, we want the agent to be able to learn from a limited amount of data. The left side of the slide provides an example. We have a task which consists of classifying five characters from the Latin alphabet, A, B, E, M, and Z. A second task might be to classify Greek characters. By confronting the agent to more and more tasks, our hope is that when presented with new unseen characters, in this case, Chinese characters, the agent will be able to learn to robustly classify them despite being given only one data sample per class. All right, let's have a look at 
uh, an example from the reinforcement learning literature. Here we've got a cheetah who starts to run forwards or backwards at a desired target velocity. Again, we confront the cheetah to many, many tasks, and we observe the following behavior post-meta-learning. At first, we see that the cheetah hops forwards and backwards, trying to identify what uh, the unknown task is about. After one gradient step, the magic happens. The cheetah is able to infer what the task is about, as well as solving the task by running in the desired direction and at the desired speed. Now, those results are impressive. However, there is a caveat. And the caveat is that the algorithms to obtain those results are particularly tricky to implement. Enters Learn to Learn. Learn to Learn provides implementation to many state-of-the-art algorithms, and we're constantly growing the number of supported algorithms in the library. We also provide standardized benchmark tasks for the supervised and reinforcement learning domains that enable researchers and practitioners alike to compare the performance of meta-learning algorithms. Last but not least, we strive to follow software engineering best practices by continuously testing our implementation and tasks. Now, Learn to Learn loves PyTorch. In fact, we strive to maintain compatibility with the entire PyTorch ecosystem. That means that you can use any data set, any module, or any library, as long as they're compatible with the core PyTorch library. Second, we follow a similar uh, design philosophy. We provide a high-level API to practitioners that enable them to use existing meta-learning algorithms for their task at hand. For researchers, we provide a low-level API that enables them to implement new and hopefully better meta-learning algorithms. If you would like to learn more about Learn to Learn, visit learntolearn.net or come talk to us at the end of this uh, day. I would like to conclude by thanking my teammates, Pratik, Deb, and Ian, without whom this whole project would not have been possible. I would also like to thank the PyTorch Hackathon organizers for an awesome event, and to thank you for your attention. Thank you. and I'm a graduate student at Meta. And today I'm very excited to be here to talk about Torch Meta, a library for few shot learning and meta learning in PyTorch. Um, so the main motivation behind Torch Meta is to simplify the process of benchmarking and improve reprodu reproducibility in meta learning research. Um, it was inspired by a bunch of different libraries such as OpenAI Gem which has now become a standard interface for reinforcement learning environments, as well as Torch Vision, uh, which provides a variety of data loaders for computer vision tasks in PyTorch. Uh, Torch Meta features uh, data loaders for few shot learning benchmarks uh, with helper functions with best practices from the literature. It also features extensions of, Py of PyTorch to simplify the creation of meta learning models. Now, the data loaders will build on top of PyTorch data loader specifically for meta learning. So they should look very familiar to you. Uh, it provides a unified interface for both few shot classification as well as few shot regression problems so that switching between data sets is as seamless as possible. Torch Meta currently features eight different data sets, uh, three toy regression problems, and five. Uh, image classification problems. And because some meta-learning algorithms have specific needs, and Seb talked about that before, uh, Torch Meta also features a thin extension of PyTorch modules called meta-modules, and this allows you to create models compatible with gradient-based meta-learning methods with minimal changes to your existing models. Uh, for example, let's say you have a model such as the one on the right, Using Torch Meta and just a few updates to your model, it is ready to be used for gradient-based methods, 
where you need to backpropagate through learning rule like gradient descent. Thanks to this additional parameter uh, argument to the forward function params. You can try TorchMeta now, and we are welcoming contributions for new data sets for few-shot learning and also for meta learning. Finally, I would like to thank everyone at Mira uh, for their incredible support for this project and all the students that helped testing the library during the early stages of development. Uh, I would like to also thank the PyTorch team for organizing this great hackathon and inviting me today to talk uh, about TorchMeta. Thank you. Thank you.